Happy snowy evening to everyone. Uh, this weekend was our home race here in Laramie, and it was just such an incredible weekend. All of our skiers are totally on fire and skiing so well, and we were able to host a, a really awesome event, and I know some of you were actually at the dinner on Saturday night, so I hope that you really enjoyed it, and thank you so much for coming and supporting us. Um, I think it went really well. We actually were able to make $4,000, so uh, we're feeling pretty, pretty stoked about it, feeling like it was a job well done. So today I actually have a lot to talk about with regard to scheduling, so I'm going to jump into that right away, um, partly because we're starting to come to mid-semester, which I know it's hard to believe that we're already there. We, we do have uh, the practical exam coming up next week, so we need to think quite concertedly about getting that all ready to go. And what I would like to do is by this Wednesday, I'd like to have all of the practical questions chosen and we'd like to get um, everything set up for the practical on Friday, uh, particularly because, of course, uh, Craig and Katie are always running ahead on that. Um, and I'm sure you've talked with John a little bit about how he'll want to handle your section. But um, as far as all of my TAs, I want to make sure we have those practical questions chosen and selected by Wednesday. If you want to work on it a little bit before or after your lab periods, that would be great. And then we'll get everything set up for the first version on Friday. And that means that um, Sarah and Alaya and my are going to have a little bit of um, extra fun to be had on Friday as we get set up. Now, I actually have um, a bit of a, a conflict this Friday. I will be uh, helping to, I will actually be doing the timing for the state high school race. So I'm going to be working out with John and possibly um, someone else to be in open lab. So there'll be some help for you there. Uh, I may work to uh, set up the practical, help set up the practical even before that. So I may be working on that in the morning. Um, but we'll make sure that everything gets gets ready to go and that we're all set to uh, get everything done. This week is going to be a super busy week because we have our second lecture exam also on Tuesday evening. Um, well, all day on Tuesday, but it will run all the way through the evening. Uh, so that's uh, going to keep us quite busy on that day. And I know that some of you are going to help me out with the lecture for that day. And I'll talk about that momentarily, but that'll be um, very helpful. And I thank you much. But I do know also that that lecture is a, a kind of a difficult one. So I'm more than happy to give it um, for anyone who needs a break on that day. Um, and of course, if you've signed up for, you know, lots and lots of lectures in a row, um, please make sure you get a break and, and have me spell you for, for some of those lectures. Okay, so um, I think that's much of the scheduling, although I did want to talk about something that's coming uh, also next week, and that is your midterm grades are due. So what I want to look at is on eCompanion where we should be as far as the midterm grades. Now this will look a little different for general micro because you'll be adding your scores to the, the existing course scores that are there, but I'm going to show the med micro one just to get an idea of what the lab score should total when we get our midterm grades do, done. So th the kind of strange thing is that the midterm grades won't include the practical exam because we'll be taking the practical next Thursday and Friday, or sorry, next Wednesday and Thursday. So they won't actually include the practical scores in it. But here's what we'll have, and I'm going to bring this up um, minus the student's name here, but to show you where, where the scores are, uh, it looks to be that I've gone ahead and added in the dilution, the dilution problem score box that most of you have not already had a chance to grade. But when we do take that into account and we also look all the way through pre-lab 13, um, it looks like we should have a total for lab out of 62.5 points. So you'll want to make sure that your tally does reach that for each and every one of your students. Now, one thing that's really important for that is that if you have a student who has not submitted something, even if they are planning to eventually submit it, maybe they used a late coupon and it's just coming in late, even so you're going to have to enter a zero for that column until that score is accounted for because we want everyone's score to be out of that total. So when you finish with each of your students, your score should read out of 62 2.5 and everyone's score should be the same even if they haven't submitted something. So that does entail adding a zero in for those students who haven't submitted 
uh, an assignment. Okay, so that should get us up to speed on the, the midterm grades, and we'll try to have those done, as I mentioned, by next week, midway through the week. And that'll be helpful to me because um, we're starting to come to a crunch time when I'll be gone for, I'll be leaving for nationals. So um, this is going to be a little bit of a rough time for me, and so your extra help will be so very much appreciated um, because I will be gone the week after the practical exam. So that first week of March, I'm going to actually be leaving um, on the 2nd of March, which is the Friday. So I'll be gone for that next open lab as well. So after that, I'll be around all the time. You'll get tired of me, but um, this will be, you know, kind of my crunch time at this point. Let's talk just a little bit about Lab 10 and, um, or Lab 10 and 11 that we'll be doing all at the same time. So uh, let me just pull that up. And I know we've talked a bit about this before, but it is uh, an involved lab because, namely, we have to begin at the very beginning of the hour. So we have to make sure that the students have done the first few steps of the procedure uh, right at the very beginning. In fact, they'll work up until the 20 minute incubation. And then once that 20 minute incubation starts, uh, either I or whoever's doing the lecture will jump into that lecture. We'll do, uh, we'll lecture for about 20 minutes, which usually gets you part of the way through the lecture. And then we'll stop, we'll do the heat shock, we'll put the cells in the recovery buffer, and then we'll put them into the recovery heat bath. So at that point, they'll have a 30 minute incubation. During that incubation is the time that we're going to want to um, go ahead and uh, finish up all that needs to be done from the prior lab, lab 9, but we're also going to want to work ahead to lab 11. So lab 11 is a very simple lab where they're simply going to be plating E. coli and then spotting filtered sewage on there to try to isolate bacteriophage, but it takes a few minutes so they'll want to try to insert it into that 30 minute incubation. Um, so um, of course, yeah, so during that 30 minute incubation we finish the lecture, we go ahead and do lab 9 results and we go ahead and do lab 11. If we're organized like that, then everything just goes really great. Now, I know that there are a few of you who are planning to give the lecture for lab 10, and um, that's awesome. Um, I want to make sure you're kind of um, a couple of little nuances that maybe aren't specific or explicit in the lecture. One is that with um, horizontal gene transfer, there the three types that we're talking about are transduction, transformation, and conjugation. And those are the three types of horizontal gene transfer, or LGT or HDT, lateral gene transfer. Um, but one quick note is that just because um, a lateral gene transfer event has taken place, it doesn't necessarily mean that recombination has happened. Recombination entails a change in the genotype of the recipient cell. So sometimes you get that whole, um, I always joke about this, sometimes you can get horizontal gene transfer with no recombination. That is, you could get, say, a, a, a transformation event and then the DNA gets degraded. And then even though there was a horizontal gene transfer event, there was not a recombination, right? So that's the one that I always make the analogy to the Ellen DeGeneres comedy routine where it's like energy, 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 right? She's talking about people who videotape their sex and she was saying, you know, like you're going back through and watch, re watching and rewatching it and, and she's like, energy, 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 nothing, <laughs> right? And that's what I think of every time I think of, um, of an, a, an HGT event that doesn't lead to recombination. Okay, so um, that kind of gets us through lab 10, and I think we can talk a little bit about 11 and 12, and that'll be, of course, the, the meat of the bacteriophage lecture is in lab 12. So to bring that up and talk just a bit about that, uh, one note is that I will be probably taking groups of students back to look at their GFP expression to see it under the black light so that they can see the... Um, fruition of their transformation experiment, but we'll be working at the same time with that sort of complicated dilution for the bacteriophage, so you'll have to be really active with the students and making sure that they're getting the technique of the over, the plate overlay technique that we'll be using in this lab. So 
with our lecture coverage, we haven't covered viruses yet, so please feel free to take your time in explaining bacteriophages. And in fact, one really helpful thing to me would be if you could cover well the difference between the um, lytic and lysogenic pathways, that is to say, the difference between virulent and temperate bacteriophage, because that can be kind of a complicated concept. And later when we talk about specialized transduction versus generalized transduction, it's really nice if the students can um, pull back their memories of the difference between lysogenic and lytic pathways, the difference between uh, temperate and virulent bacteriophage. Uh, on the board, you may want to put that uh, little memory device that's uh, the, the acronym All People Buy Moldy Lemons, and that helps us remember the phases of, or the phases of bacteriophage infection. So, uh, beginning with adsorption, penetration, um, biosynthesis, maturation, and lysis. So that is a helpful acronym to kind of help uh, you get through the, the different phases. So this is a fun lecture, and I know uh, that some of you are, have, are lucky enough to have asked John to do the guest lecture for this. John is an expert in bacteriophage. That's where his doctoral work was done. So if you have questions, actually, that are just curiosities, uh, John is an, a marvelous person to talk to about bacteriophage. Alrighty, so I think um, that covers through that. Now, now only Craig and Katie will be going on to lab 13. So I'll just briefly go into that, although for the most part this is a lecture that um, that you only want to take on if one, you're uber excited about fungus, or two, maybe you're pretty darned excited about environmental applications um, of microbiology. There's a lot of content in this lecture, partly because we, we want it we wanted to keep this low on lab work the day prior to their final or their midterm exam, their practical exam. So with this lecture, uh, only take it on if you're willing to just really kick its butt and, and just do it like crazy. Um, so if you if you have signed up for that one, um, I'm pretty sure some of you who have are, are really into this and you're really stoked. But if you signed up for it and you're not so interested in fungus, please have me do this lecture because I love it. So um, I love to, to talk about the fungus among us. Okay, so now with that being said, um, just a quick last reminder that we need to get practical exam questions selected. We need to get midterm grades done. A lot of hecticness, a lot of business busyness happening um, in the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much for all of your help. Um, so many of you becoming much better lecturers, really being thoughtful with your practice in that area. I know with time uh, you'll be more and more comfortable with how to manipulate those overheads and how to add your own personality into your lectures, but I've been really impressed with the, the mindful practice that you've been putting into preparing for them, and, and that's just, um, it's been awesome. Okay, I hope that all of you are not too stressed about too many exams and too much work coming up, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all very soon.